Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, I have seven roses in front of me from various places around the globe. Uh, how do I organise something like this? Well, what I've done is I've put them in palest to darkest. Is that the right order? Only one way to find out. First one I have is Gérard Bertrand uh, Pédoc uh, Gris Blanc 2012, made from Grenache Gris and Grenache Noir. Pale, almost crystalline colour. Let's see whether it's a pale, almost crystalline flavour. Well, there's a slightly sandy, almost, uh, yeah, almost salty tang about this. Uh, very light, uh, gentle uh, raspberry in there. A bit of citrus. It feels uh, pale and it also feels quite interesting. Let's taste it. One of those, like, um, the good Provence ones that smell, uh, uh, the look and smell maybe as if, like, you almost like a bit spot the wine and then they grow in the mouth. And uh, So here, um, yes, it creeps up on you. And there's, that, yeah, that sandy saltiness persists. Um, uh, the, the, yes, de de definite touch of soil rather than uh, just, uh, uh, just fruit. And fruit-wise, a um, bit of apple, a bit of citrus, um, and uh, yes, that red berry hint, not as prominent when you come to taste it as when you, when you smell it, but uh, decent enough. Mm. Yeah, pretty colour too. Uh, number two is also a pretty colour, and you'll notice a bit's gone. I said to my wife, do you want a glass while uh, I'm in the, uh, the lounge doing this? And she said, yes, I'll have that one. Only one with a cork? I don't know. Is, that, is there something to be read into that? Anyway, uh, this one is Jean-Luc Colombo, Les Pins. Cushy uh, from the Mediterranean. Give it a whirl. And this smells more fruity than the first one. A bit of uh, cooked apple, a bit of rhubarb. Um, it smells like it's maybe not going to be as crisp and as uh, svelte as the first one, but um, a bit more substance. Yeah, quite a rich, juicy mouthfeel. Uh, some rosés want to be white wines, some want to be red wines. This one just wants to be a rosé. It's happy enough to uh, have uh, elements of both a white wine and a red wine. So the uh, white wine bit is this apple-y fruit that, that, that's coming through. The red wine is um, yeah, it's notes of strawberry. And um, that rhubarb, I think, hovers between the two of them. Good. Uh, I am fuller bodied than the first one, um, and uh, you certainly get to uh, feel more presence of a wine. Alcohol-wise, Actually, the first one's higher alcohol, 13% compared with 12.5%. Here, I don't know whether it's a, maybe a little touch of sugar that feel, makes it feel that um, it's, a, it's a fuller bodied wine. As I, it's not a sweet wine by any means, but uh, maybe they've just left a few grams of sugar in there to, uh, to flesh it out, and they've done it very well. Probably just about prefer the first one, though. Okay. Uh, next one. Um, these two are much the same colours, number three and four, but uh, I'll go for Villa Maria. Uh, East Coast Rosé from New Zealand first. Made from... I'm not sure what it's made from. I've got a feeling that uh, Merlot probably plays uh, quite a role in this, but there might be some Pinot in there. I have no idea. Anyway, I'll see. If I find out and it's interesting, I'll flash it up on screen for you. A bit fey and confected, this. Um, there's uh, slightly um, weak tinned strawberry juice. That doesn't, doesn't sound very positive. It's okay, but um, uh, it feels that the, the previous two had this um, uh, yeah, more interesting, slightly savoury quality. Here, it feels just a little bit confected. And it's okay. Black brain apple pie. A um, bit of sweetness, a bit of dusting of uh, almost Turkish delight like. Turkish delight like floral character. Fair enough wine. Let's try wine number four, which is much the same colour as wine number three, but this is from South Africa, the River Garden Rosé by Lawrenceford. Uh, and I'm not quite sure. Wine of orange in Stellenbosch, that's where it says it's from. Uh, I'll give it a whirl. Now this doesn't feel as confected, it feels like it's got a slightly more savoury uh, note to it. There is some of what I call the South African bake there, but because they haven't kept the wine on the skins for all that long, otherwise it would have turned into a red wine, it's not dominating the wine. Uh, it feels like there's some, um, yeah, some red berry, and again, a touch of apple in there, but uh, anyway, let's give it a try. And then when you come to taste it, that um, South African bake, burnt character um, comes to the fore, and so the, 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 the nice fruit uh, gets it's in there somewhere, but um, that uh, that Cape accent uh, just is a little bit too dominant there. 
Uh, I thought it was going from the smell. I thought it was going to be suppressed and in the background, but come to taste it. Ha, Achman. Uh, one number five. Uh, this is Altozano uh, Vino de la Tierra de, Quis de Castilla from Finca Constancia in Espain and uh, it's Tempranillo Syrah 2012. Let's give it a whirl. The slightly medicinal berry uh, character here and um, I, I don't know if anyone used to have liquid penicillin when they when they were a child. A pink medicine, but that that character comes through quite strongly. Uh, but then the, the the fruit on top of it berries, a bit of plums there, plum in there too, and um, it smells okay. And again, come to taste it, a bit more of that um, medicinal note. I quite like it. I, I prefer it to uh, the previous two, but uh, uh, the French ones are still leading the pack for me. Let's see whether. The one number six, which is also from Spain, can uh, um, yeah up the Spanish point. So this one is Cunez Rioja Rosado, 2011. This smells rounded, juicy, uh, but fresh with it. Um, so there's a bit of citrus, a bit of apple. Um, the colour-wise, and again, it, it, well, it's, it's a year older. Um, the the um, it, it's starting to get a little bit more orangey, not brown, but uh, uh, the maybe some of the perky colour of youth has gone. But um, but the wine doesn't seem to be suffering from it. It, it feels like it's uh, it's it's rosé, but mellow rosé. That's pretty good. Um, yeah, it's it's it, that for me does what a rosé should do. It should be refreshing. Um, it shouldn't be a white wine. It, sh it shouldn't be a red wine. It's got the it's got the red fruit flavours, the the um, uh, the red berries, um, and it's got the freshness of uh, citrus and apple, um, and um, uh, and then it leaves your mouth feeling uh, refreshed rather than overwhelmed by either alcohol or sweetness, and it makes you think I would like a little bit of lamb with that. Tasty, yeah, um, and uh, I like it at least as much as the French ones. Uh, probably, yeah, as much because um, uh, I think that, I think the, f the first French one was uh, it was yeah equal to that. Maybe the second one just a slight dip below, but uh, uh, wines for different occasions. I'd, I'd have the first one lunch with seafood. That one uh, lunch with uh, yeah cold roast beef. Let's see what we, how we get on with the final one, which is from Australia. Uh, Grant Burge uh, Rosé 2012, uh, made from, uh, it doesn't say on the back label, but made from grapes, hopefully. And this is juicy, ripe, red uh, berry, but sweet red berry, almost like uh, um, if, you, if you get a load of strawberries and put sugar on them, that ooze that comes off, out after about half, a, half an hour. Uh, it smells like it's going to be uh, maybe the fullest bodied of these. Uh, it's also the deepest colour, uh, but uh, it's 12 and a half percent. I'm not sure whether they've achieved that by early picking or whether it's going to have a touch of sweetness. Certainly that slight sugar syrup, strawberry juice character makes me think that if it were slightly sweet, I wouldn't be surprised. Anyway, let's try it. I'm not sure whether there's a bit of oak in there. There's a slight smoky bacon character uh, coming through. It is. I, I do get a touch of sweetness there, um, and uh, it feels slightly sweet and confected after the uh, the, the cune. It's okay. Um, I pro I prefer it to the uh, uh, well f three, four, and five. But uh, the, the, the yeah, the, the cune and the two French ones really do stand out for me. Uh, that's I I'd, I'd probably finish a glass of that. Uh, I might not say the same for some some of the others, but uh, I'd, uh, the the three I mentioned, the two French ones and the Cunet, I would be pushing for a second glass and maybe even a third. See you soon.